For anyone else looking to transition away from Windows for your operating system, like myself, I have been looking into that recently. My last video was actually about that, basically just going into the history of my Windows experience and how I'm, I think I'm finally ready to let go of Windows and move on to something else, Linux. Linux is the way to go. And after watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of, you know, opinions on the internet, Linux Mint seems to be the way to go. It seems to be the easiest transition. It's also really easy to install. And it's it's a natural transition from Windows to Linux. Like it feels very familiar is what I'm hearing. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do the install, how easy it really is. And for you gamers out there, we'll install Steam and I will show you how you can use the uh, Proton translation layer to use all of your Steam library games, just like you could on Windows, now on Linux. Okay, so first things first, you gotta go to the Linux Mint website. So here we go, Linux Mint. And there we go, there's the site. And then you go to the download, click download for Cinnamon Edition. There's also other editions, but uh, we're just gonna go through Cinnamon Edition here. So you click on that 64-bit torrent there, download that. And you can use your torrent of choice. Uh, I use Qubit Torrent because it's open source. So here we are in Qubit Torrent. So we go file, add torrent file. We find our file and open it. And it's going to the downloads. We want it to start the torrent immediately. There's the file size. If you want to check that, you probably should check that to make sure the torrent you're getting is accurate to what it should be. And then uh, click OK. All right, so the download is done. Okay, so we've got our Linux Mint Cinnamon version ISO in our downloads folder. So you're gonna wanna go back onto your browser and get a flashing software. So we're flashing the ISO onto a flash drive. You got your trusty little USB. You're gonna plug that in and we're gonna flash the ISO onto your flash drive. So you search for Rufus, it's called Rufus. This is a known tool. This is a trusted tool for flashing Linux onto a flash drive. Let's just go down to the Rufus 4.8.exe download here. Save it to your downloads. So now we have the Rufus tool in our downloads folder. We're gonna plug in our flash drive. We're gonna go ahead and give Rufus the full administrator privileges here. So right click on it and run as administrator. Okay, so this is the Rufus application. So we have our flash drive here. Just make sure you have the right one selected. You don't wanna accidentally format over, cause it will delete everything, right? Formatting and flashing a uh, ISO onto your flash drive. It will delete everything on it. So make sure it's a flash drive that you have nothing on and uh, make sure this is the right one selected here. We're doing an ISO image, so this is correct already. We click select to select the right one. So go to your downloads, select your ISO and click open. It's gonna scan the image for a moment. So just wait for that. Okay, and so once it says Linux Mint Cinnamon 64-bit here, it shows up properly, then it's done and just leave all the defaults here and click start and leave the recommended here. It is an ISO image, so click okay. And this is just saying that my application has a version difference. So if you have this as well, just click yes. And it's just warning us that everything's gonna be deleted, as I said. So yes, just click okay, because you wanna delete everything and flash the, the uh, image onto the USB. And now we just wait. Okay, so now that that's done, we're ready to install Mint Linux on our PC. Uh, for you, I would just recommend looking up the boot menu key for your motherboard. So you're gonna look up the brand of your motherboard and what is most likely the boot menu key for that motherboard. And it's probably gonna be something like F10, F11, F12, something like that. It's usually around those keys. Uh, you can always just spam, try it a couple times, keep restarting and try. <laughs> you gotta do it right as your computer's coming up from a, a boot, right? So right as you see that kind of press this for BIOS, you should be spamming those keys to try and get into the boot menu. So yeah, try that to get to your boot menu and just select your flash drive from the list to boot into your flash drive. And then I will show you from here on a virtual machine. I've been doing all my testing on a virtual machine before I actually commit and jump in on putting it on my main PC. So uh, I will jump into my virtual machine and we'll start from there. Okay, so you should be seeing something like this after spamming that boot menu key and selecting your flash drive. So you just wanna select Start Linux Mint. You'll see the Linux Mint logo pop up. And there we are. So we're in the Linux Mint live environment. So you could potentially use this environment as your kind of daily driver. If you're not planning on installing any applications or anything like that, you could use it this way. You could just have this Linux Mint on your flash drive and use it kind of, but uh, we're installing it on the system. 
So you use this live environment and click install Linux Mint to actually install it onto your computer. So right now it's only on the flash drive. We're gonna install it on the computer now. So we click this. Okay, and you'll get your installer menu here. So you just select your language. I'm, I speak English, so we're gonna go English. And we get our keyboard layouts here. So whatever's appropriate for you, mine's English US, English US, right? So we just leave that and hit continue. Now this is optional, like if you're going to be playing a lot of videos or doing a lot of different video format type stuff, you can install these multimedia codecs to make sure all your videos play properly. I'm just going to leave that for now and just hit continue. Okay, and there's a lot of advanced stuff here that you can do, but we're just doing the default setup and the default setup should be plenty. It should be perfect for most users. So we're just leaving this selected here, the erase disk and install Linux Mint, and then we hit install now. And uh, it's asking if we really want to make these changes to the hard drive. We, we just say continue because yes, we do. All right, so we're selecting our time zone with this one. So I'm on the West Coast. So I select the LA time zone. We set up our user and password here and the computer's name. So I, I go by Claudius on YouTube, so I'll call it Claudius. But I don't want to call my computer that. So I will call this Mint Box. And just to shorten the username a little bit, I'll call it cloud. And then you put in your password. And just for security, you should probably leave it this way, require my password to log in, and then hit continue. So you're gonna see it copying files here. You just gotta wait for that to finish. Okay, when the install is done, it will have this little pop-up and it just says install is finished. Do you wanna continue testing, just kind of messing around with Linux Mint, or do you wanna restart? So once you restart, it's going to boot into the actual Linux Mint that is installed on your computer. So go ahead and hit restart now. It's gonna ask you to remove the installation media. So go ahead and unplug your USB and then hit enter on your keyboard. All right, so we're booted up and we are at our login screen of our newly installed OS Linux Mint. So just go ahead and log in. And here we are, you get a little welcome tutorial kind of. So you can go through this if you want to see the first steps, read some of the documentation to kind of familiarize yourself. Uh, but I'm gonna close that and we'll just get it started. I'll give you a little walkthrough. So down in the bottom right, you get your time and your date stuff, just like in Windows. You got a little sound panel there, just like with Windows, little sound control. It shows me that I'm connected to the internet, right? There's your network settings, just like in Windows. And then it shows you your kind of update manager. So this is how you can update your software. And see, it already has an update for me. So you can click apply that update and that's updating your OS. That's actually updating the software on your OS. So that's how you get your kind of software and security updates for Linux Mint. So you have a taskbar just like with Windows. In the bottom left, the little Linux Mint icon, it's basically your start button, just like with Windows. So you click that, you get your power options first just like in Windows. And then uh, over here is just all of your applications. So you hover this and you can see all of your applications on your Linux Mint install. And it comes with Firefox installed by default. So Firefox is the browser and Firefox is probably one of the best alternatives to Microsoft Edge or uh, Google Chrome. And I say one of, because yeah, of course there are different ones out there. There's the Brave browser that has a privacy focus. There's LibreWolf, which is even more privacy focused and it's completely open source. And so if we go back into our all applications here and scroll down a bit, this comes with, Linux Mint comes with the LibreOffice suite. So it comes with applications that you'll be familiar with from Microsoft, such as LibreOffice Writer, which is like Microsoft Word, and LibreOffice Calc, which is like Microsoft uh, Excel. So it's kind of cool. You get some tools automatically that installed that you'll be familiar with. And then uh, let's go into the application or software manager. So software manager is basically like the app store for Linux Mint. So you go in here and you can easily search and find software that you'd be familiar with. So it automatically, it's popping up with stuff that's pretty commonly downloaded, right? Like Blender for 3D modeling, FileZilla for your FTP. But we're gonna search for Steam. There's Steam, we click on that. Click Install to install Steam. Go ahead and put in your password to allow the install. So this segment is specifically for the gamers out there, right? So we're installing Steam, and then I'm gonna show you how to enable the Proton layer for your games, the Proton translation layer, so that you can play all of your games that would normally not be playable on Linux. So install is done, we click Launch to open up Steam. There's a required package here, so we just click Install for that. Just wait for Steam to update. 
Okay, so now that we're in Steam, I just want to show you up here the little penguin icon. This shows only games that run on Linux. So I have 276 games in my library, but if I click this, there's only 74 that are actually designed to run on Linux. Like the, de the developer actually exported the game to be able to be run on Linux. So if they didn't opt to do that, then all of these games do not natively run on Linux. So how do we play them? Okay, so I've picked an example here. This is Eastward. It's a little pixel game. I wanted to pick something lightweight because I am running this on a VM and I don't have all of my system's resources that I would normally have on my actual PC. So I don't want to run something super heavy. So uh, you go into the little icon here for manage and click properties. You go into compatibility, click this little checkbox and then do the drop down to the most recent version here. There's just the highest number, Proton 9.04. And then that is it. So now it shows that I can install the game. So go ahead and install your game. All right, and the install is done so I can click play. And we're not expecting perfect playability here because again, this is on a virtual machine. But if this was on your actual machine, it would play just like normal or even better performance than normal on a Windows PC sometimes. And there you have it. Our game is running on Linux. Eastward, our example game is running on Linux. It is not natively made for Linux. The developer did not export it for Linux to be run. But here it is, running on Linux. So there we go, that was the install of Linux Mint. I think it's pretty easy, pretty easy to follow along with. And for the gamers out there, it, I, what do you guys think? If you have an operating system that can play all of your games, like with the Proton translation layer, right? It can be played on Linux. What is stopping you now from switching from Windows to Linux? It, it's a pretty easy transition now, don't you think? And uh, again, it's so simple to install this operating system. Uh, a lot of your graphics cards will have drivers ready just out of the box, but also you can update them. So there's no issues there. Really should be a pretty easy transition for most gamers to go from Windows to Linux. Unless you're using very specific Windows software that can't be run on Linux, I think it could be a pretty simple jump. So let me know what you guys think of the video. Let me know Linux users out there uh, if there's another Linux operating system that you might recommend. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.